Thanks for staying with us. Uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has raised the monetary policy rate NPR to 27.5%, representing a significant increase aimed at curbing inflation and stabilizing the economy. This decision announced during the Monetary Policy Committee meeting reflects the CBN's commitment to addressing persistent economic challenges, including rising prices and currency volatility. Uh, the new rate is expected to impact borrowing costs, influencing both businesses and consumers as the country continues efforts to achieve economic stability. To discuss this with me is Mr. Shegun Shokwiton, Chairman, Accountability Kanda and Transparency Network. Good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Uh, good morning, Mr. Gaji. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Um, the MPC or the MPR has been raised yet again. Now this time it's to 27 point you know, something. And they're still saying it's to curb inflation. I don't know how much this has worked in the past. I'd like your take on this because they said the vote was unanimous. They agree that this is the solution to our biting inflation. Look, it's not the solution. Um, but, you know, there's nothing wrong with it being a part of the solution as long as we are applying, um, you know, the, the principles correctly. And I'm, and I'm concerned that we, we no longer are. Um, the central bank appears to be stuck in this rut and they're just going to keep going um, uh, regardless of um, what the uh, you know, the metrics and the data is saying and what the reality on ground is. Um, I listened very, very attentively to the CBN governor as he read out the communique yesterday and gave, you know, his opinion, especially when he was answering questions. And um, a lot of what he says, you know, do, they, they do make sense. Um, they, they do make sense. Uh, but my, my, my challenge is um, you do have to take all of those principles, those ideas, um, um, and put in, you know, the context of the reality on ground and how that affects what you're trying to do and the results you're getting. Right now, it looks as if um, he's just going to keep going, applying this textbook approach to inflation management um, when it is clear that it, at the best, if you want to be very charitable, you'll say, it's having very moderate effects on inflation. The inflation is not really uh, being tempered significantly enough for the price that we're paying with this continued hawkish stance and, and, and rate increases. And we're paying a big price. You know, the, 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 the data is also out there. We're paying a big price. Um, we're, we're literally almost like shelling inflation for that with these rate increases and curtailing growth. For me, the real problem is curtailing growth. So the rate increase is supposed to achieve the singular objective of um, mopping up liquidity you know, within the system, reducing the volume of money in, in, in the economy, such that you can then uh, reduce you know, the pressure on the goods and services that, it push, that is pushing prices up. Um, unfortunately, that is not really happening. There are a number of reasons for that. So the CBN needs to realize that in, in as much as it may want to say that, you know, it's achieving some moderate uh, successes with managing inflation. Um, inflation is not coming down. And the reason for that are not monetary. So you, you can't keep um, taking measures that are monetary and have very significant negative impact on other sides of the economy when your primary reason for doing it is not being achieved you have to you you know you've got to do something different and we've been saying this now for months multiple mpc meetings in the past we've been saying stop hiking you have to look for other solutions you have to work with the fiscal authorities to find other solutions so as it is now if you look at the gdp report you will find that the productive sector uh, manufacturing industries are either shrinking or, or, or flat. They're not growing. And those are the people that drive 
you know, the, the, the most basic costs of living in this country. They're not growing. Inventories are, are piling up. It means that growth is significantly being sacrificed because we're trying to use monetary tools to manage inflation that is cost push in nature. It just it has to stop. We've got to stop at some point. You know, so so there, there are moderate gains. There are some things that the CBN has achieved that, that one can say, oh, this is not bad, um, even though it's, it's not significant enough. But, but at the end of the day, we can't just keep hiking this way. So we've got to do something different. Yeah, because um, no matter what they may have achieved, it, is, it's, it seems like it's a pyrrhic victory uh, where, where, where the victory amounts to nothing but a, a defeat, even though you have, you have uh, emerged victorious. I don't know how they are, what aspects of the economy they will reject after especially the International Monetary Fund advised that some of these policies are not working, there should be a rethink. It doesn't seem as if there's any plan for a rethink on the policies, especially the monetary policies, uh, that will be uh, beneficial to the people of Nigeria. So I don't even know where they are going to begin. If you were to advise on... Uh, the kind of things to rework following the IMF advice, even though, even though they are the same cause of some of the problems we have right now. But following that advice that, you know, go back to the drawing board and rethink your policies and all that, especially as, as it concerns uh, monetary policies, what would you adv advise? You know, first of all, on the rethink, Mr. Cardoso was very clear yesterday. He addressed this point you are raising. And he was categorical in saying there's no going back. He was categorical. <laughs> I heard that loud and clear. He was basically responding to people like you and I who are saying it's not working, do something else. He's saying, no, there's no going back. We are going to continue this course. We're going to believe in it. We're going to believe it's going to work. And we're going to keep doing it. Um, so there's not going to be a rethink. Um, so that being said, um, to answer the second part of your question, what, what would advice be done? Um, it's ironic that it's the IMF that is saying we think this because uh, they are the ones driving this policy. So I don't know what, what, what they're talking about. Um, so my first advice would be, so first of all, let me, let me put a caveat on this. Um, my views are relatively unorthodox. And a lot of economic um, analysts and experts will disagree with me. Uh, but, but I'm very resolute because I have looked, I have looked. Um, young girls have looked at other, other countries around the world and reading material on this particular subject right now, looking especially at Asia, and I'm finding that none of these countries achieved the things that they have achieved in the last 30, 40, 50 years by following IMF and World Bank prescriptions. None. Why are we doing it? It makes no sense. So for me, I would say we've got to be radical. We have to be radical. We have to, you know, tell ourselves the truth and say, look, we're 63 years old. We've been in bed with the IMF and the World Bank for, you know, pretty much about 50 years or more, you know, of our existence. Where are we? What, what have we achieved? What did we achieve with the structural adjustment pro 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 program under the um, um, uh, Buhari, uh, Babangida um, presidency administration? You know, what, what did we achieve? Where are we today? Having you know, follow this IMF principles to the letter almost. Our President Buhari um, was very categorical in refusing some of the IMF advice. And I praise him for that. Whatever other failings he might have had, you see, that one thing that he did saved us a lot of heartache and a lot of pain, even though some people would say he was kicking the can down the road. And the reason that would now be true is that the other things that he needed to do, he didn't do. So my advice would be number one, um, tell the IMF and the World Bank, see their ties with them. And I know that would be almost impossible because we owe them so much money. So we've got to find a way to break free from this poverty debt trap with, 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 with um, entangled ourselves in with the Bretton Woods institutions and, and all of these neoliberal uh, you know, organizations. We need to break free. So that's the first thing. We need radical thinking that would uh, uh, free us from these people. IMF, World Bank, and their, their fellow, uh, their best fellows. That's number one. How to do that is another story, but it can be done. It's just that it's not something that will happen in one year. It's not something that will happen in five years, even. 
for the candidate and it needs to be done. Whichever president that we get who gets this, you know, clearly and actions it in a visionary and purposeful manner will be the one that will take Nigeria to where we need to be and where we can be. So first of all, break free of the IMF and the World Bank. Second of all, come up with our own solutions, with our own policies, with our own economic approach. That's what, and focus on the local environment, our local um, comparative advantage, our local resources. You know, Nigeria is a big country. So countries like India, countries like China, at some point in their history, if you go check, they locked themselves up, they closed their borders. They did things for themselves. Why were they able to do that? They had the population. So they could really, really more or less create a mini ecosystem within themselves and go. And then, knowing that nobody is an island, eventually began, began to open up. And they are where they are today. India, China, India are, depending on what data you are looking at, second and third largest economies in the world today. So whatever we're doing is not working. We've got to rethink it completely, radically. And I know a lot of people are listening to me and saying, this, what was he saying? You know, it's not reasonable. Yeah, that's exactly what we have been trained to think. You know, that's exactly how we are expected to react when you hear something completely different. But that may very well be the, be, be, be the way forward. Look, so for me, the question is, this what? What we've been doing? Where are we now in terms of development, in terms of economic growth, in terms of GDP, per capita income? You know, we're stuck in the same position. We're not moving forward. We're not moving back. In fact, I think we're moving backward because if you are not moving forward, everybody else is moving forward. So you are moving backward relatively. So we, 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 we need to change what we're doing. We need to get more radical in our approach. That's not going to come from this administration. They have made it clear how they're going to approach this. And they've made it clear, at least the CBN governor made it clear yesterday, is not changing facts, is not changing approach. They're forging ahead. And, you know, um, everybody can go to places. Well, I, I don't know. Maybe we'll have to start cultivating a new crop of politicians to, be, to have consciences and to, to want to do the right thing and be patriotic enough. Um, then you're talking about uh, cutting ties and making sure we develop our own which is a, a good thing that all Nigerians are saying. But I'm just wondering how a country that has found out that its IGR has, has skyrocketed, it has gone high, all the revenue collecting agencies, we were talking about it, was it yesterday or so, have surpassed their targets for the year. In fact, education, I think, was targeting 70 billion and they now have a trillion naira, which is uh, 930 billion above their target. And this is just a report from September. And all other ones are the same thing. And the House of Assembly, oh, sorry, the National Assembly was now asking, why is it that we still need to borrow? And the simple answer was, because that money, the borrowing was already in the, in the, in the budget, so it needs to be activated. So which means we, whether we need it or not, so long as it has entered the budget, we have to activate it and still borrow that money and still enter into debt. And that's the mentality of the people who are leading us. And these are the people that you want to lead us to El Dorado, where we will not be owing IMF. We can beat our chest and say we are a country of our own. I just wonder, well, <laughs> Mr. Shopitor, we, 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 we did it before. a closing remark from you, we just as short before. as possible, please. Okay, so, so we did it before. Uh, the president about to just paid up pretty much almost every time that we owed anybody internationally. But here we are again. So we can do it again if we, if we have the will. Um, let me close by saying that um, the only way to grow Nigeria is to grow our local content, grow our local industries, make our products and services competitive, not globally, not competing you know, in terms of exports, but competing against imports, ensuring that our local production, our local producers, the people that are driving economic growth in this country can compete against imported items. That is where our focus needs to be. And in order for that to happen, the CBN must fix the exchange rate. I know nobody wants to hear it. Nobody wants to hear this, but that is the solution. We have to fix the exchange rates, build our productivity, make ourselves competitive, you know, build our revenue base. Then we can begin to talk about floating, you know, gradually um, in line with market dictates. We're, we're doing everything the wrong way around, unfortunately. Uh, it takes a lot of will and determination to do what I'm saying. It takes a lot of uh, radical thinking to do it. But that's where we need to be. That's where we need to go. If we don't, trust me, we'll come back four years from today. We'll come back eight years from today. We'll be having the same conversations.
Okay. Uh, well, thank you so much, Mr. Shokuton, for your thoughts on uh, this topic this morning. Uh, we do hope that you'll have a lovely day ahead of you. Same to you. Have a wonderful day. That was Mr. Shegun Shokuton, Chairman Accountability Kanda and uh, Transparency Network, talking uh, to us on uh, the new monetary uh, policy um, or the monetary policy rate that has been hiked to 27 point something uh, percent now. Uh, that's where we, we draw the curtain on uh, the breakfast this morning. We thank you for your time. We're hoping that you will rejoin us tomorrow for another edition of the program. Until then, my name is Nyamgul Agaji. Thank you for being there. <laughs>